Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the 32 FPS Cougar by Keystone. We're going to start the orientation on the outside of the trailer and we're going to start at the front. Now as you'll notice, we have an outdoor kitchen located at the front of the trailer. And in the outdoor kitchen, you will see that we have a refrigerator, a cooktop, as well as a sink. Also, in this area, we have a GFCI 120 volt power supply. We have a switch. And that switch does the front running lights here. And also in here, we have your battery disconnect. What that'll allow you to do for longer periods uh, throughout the uh, season where you're using the trailer, if you are uh, not using it for for a bit of period of time in a, in a row consecutively, I would uh, engage the disconnect. That will stop uh, anything in the trailer from putting a draw on your battery. Uh, however, I would still uh, remove the battery and store uh, store indoors uh, for the uh, entire winter. Okay, we continue along the front of your trailer. Till we get to the very front and what we're going to notice here is your battery storage and the RV's double 20 pound bottle propane system connected via a crossover regulator. Now what this crossover regulator will do, and currently this handle is pointing to this 20 pound bottle. When this 20 pound bottle drops below a certain amount of pressure that is predetermined by the regulator and isn't adjustable, when this drops below that predetermined amount of pressure, it'll automatically cross over and draw propane from this tank. What that means is, in the middle of the night, if you're running your furnace and it's cold out, you don't have to get out and switch it over manually. Also at the front, we have electric tongue jack. Of note here is this stopper or plug. If you remove this plug, it will give you access to the manual crank and that manual crank can be found in the storage compartment along the off-door side of the trailer. Also at the front we have your safety breakaway switch right here. So the loop end is attached to the tow vehicle in the event that the tow vehicle is separated from your RV it will engage the trailer brakes by pulling this pin. Uh, also, you might notice that at some point you go to pull your trailer uh, and the brakes may be engaged. Uh, sometimes when doing your hitch up or your setup, uh, if you're not careful, you can pull this pin. Now it does take quite a bit of pressure to disengage it, but I have seen it before. Uh, so just come and take a look here and uh, make sure that this pin is fully inserted. So we continue along the outside of the RV. The first thing we'll come to is your hot water tank. There's a couple things to note on the outside of this hot water tank. One is the drain plug, which is actually also an anode rod. And that aims to uh, to stop uh, buildup and corrosion of your hot water tank. So with this inserted, never 
undo it and remove it unless your pressure relief valve is open. Uh, reason being, there's a lot of pressure in here. If you don't relieve the pressure, when you undo that, it'll come shooting out at you like a rocket. Also on the outside portion of the hot water tank is where you'll find the reset. So if you attempt to light, it'll usually attempt to light three times uh, and then not light. If that happens, come out here, hit the reset, make sure that's good, go back in and try to light again. Now before I get into that storage compartment, let me crouch down under here and we'll make note of the output for your black and gray water tanks as well as the valve for your black water. And the valve for your gray water, which is located underneath this slide here. So the valves to use the output for your black and gray water are located in front of and behind the tires on the off door side of the trail. All right, let's continue along. We'll come to this rear storage compartment. It's underneath uh, the bunks in your, uh, or, sorry, not underneath the bunks. It's underneath the, uh, the bed. And under here we have the cable for your uh, power supply to the trailer. This is a 50 amp plug-in. We also have the crank for your stabilization jacks, as well as the manual crank for your front tongue jack like I showed you earlier. Now those stabilization jacks are located in the four corners of your trailer and they should never be used to level the trailer. The trailer should be completely level and then the jacks merely snug to the ground. Depending on the uh, place where you're uh, situating your, tr your RV uh, and how level the ground is, you may also need some additional blocking. As we stand up from here, we will see the 30 amp, or sorry, 50 amp uh, cord plug-in. This is where you would plug in this cord, and then the other end would go to your campground or house power supply. So we'll keep, keep on along the back of your trailer till we come to your docking station. Couple things here. Your docking station has this kickstand. Pretty simple, but very useful. Holds the uh, lid open. You don't have to do it on your own while you're trying to do things. Also in here, we have the input for the entire trailer for your cable or satellite TV, as well as your black tank flush input. And an outdoor faucet that can be used with a quick connect spray hose. Also under here we'll have your city water connection or tank fill. This blue valve handle is in this position. You'll see here that that will fill your freshwater tank. With the diverter valve handle in this position, up and down, it will switch you to a city water connection. What your city water connection is would basically be hooking a garden hose up from your campground or your house to pressurize the water system of the trailer so you can use it like you would your household water supply. Tank fill in this position will fill your fresh water tank in the event that you're going camping where there isn't a water supply. Okay. Continue along the outside, coming back to the awning. And under your awning here, you'll note you have one, two speakers. Those two speakers can be used with the stereo inside the RV. Also under your awning, you have venting for your refrigerator. This venting needs to be kept unobstructed for the refrigerator to work properly. 
We also have an output and GFCI 120 volt power under the awning in case you wish to have a TV. And because it is underneath your awning, uh, I always like to mention the exhaust for your furnace is very hot. It does say hot right on it, but because there is a greater likelihood that it could, you could come in contact with it under your awning, I want to make special note of it. All right, we've come full circle, and we're going to go inside and see what we can find inside the RV. First things first, we're going to turn around and look down. And the first thing we'll see is the unit fire extinguisher. Very important piece of safety equipment. Right above here, we'll notice switching for your ceiling lights, uh, porch light or awning light, as well as the light for your steps. In this area, we also have switching to retract and extend your awning as well as switches to retract and extend every one of your slide rooms. From here, we'll hang a right, and we'll take a look at the front bunk area. As we come into the room, we'll turn on the lights, And we'll notice a couple things right away. One, it's a pretty neat room. We have these nice cubes. Now these cubes can be folded flat out for an additional sleeping space or kept the way they are as a couch to watch the supplied TV. Also on this wall underneath the TV, you have 12 volt and USB charging capabilities. In the bunk area, you also see that we have smoke detector. The smoke detector should be uh, tested or the batteries changed every six months at the same time that you uh, check your carbon monoxide uh, propane detector. And the reason why I suggest six months as that would be daylight savings time. And it's usually easiest to remember as you're turning your clocks ahead or backwards. That does it for the bunk area. Let's make our way to the main living area of your RV. So we come into the living area and turn back around towards the front of the trailer. You'll notice that we have your stereo for the RV and the TV in the same area. Now this stereo will play music or the sound from it in three zones, A, B, and C. Zone C will be outside on the speakers I showed you previously that are under your awning, and the A and B will be inside the trailer. The stereo also has USB charging, auxiliary and Bluetooth capabilities. So we turn around here. Want to make sure I note an additional smoke detector. So make sure that you change all batteries and all smoke detectors when testing your propane carbon monoxide system. Speaking of which, as we turn to look at your stove and range area, we'll also note that right below that we have your carbon monoxide propane detector. As I mentioned previously, good idea to check this every six months at the same time that you set your clocks and check your uh, smoke detectors. One thing I will note about these, they are fairly sensitive and uh, different uh, chemicals can set them off, 
Uh, one big one is paint. If you've done any painting uh, inside the unit, it uh, very likely will set that off. Now, right beside your propane carbon monoxide detector, we have your power center or load center. This is where you'd find all your breakers like you'd have in your house, and they function much the same, and your fuses like you might see in your vehicle. Now, these do also have a red light that will light up when a fuse is burnt out. All right, looking up to your oven, we will note that it does not have an automatic spark and that's okay. There is your pilot right there. Simply light that with your barbecue lighter. At the same time as you turn this knob to the pilot or light position, and then press and hold. And at the same time as you press and hold this, you light the pilot that I showed you previously. Now the three burners on the range top are equipped with an automatic sparker. You simply turn them to the light position, turn the sparking knob, and it should light. Let's just pivot slightly and we'll take a look at your indication panel. This is where you'll see switching for your water pump and for your water heater for gas or electric. Also here, you can find out your battery level, fresh, black, and gray water tank levels. Next door to that is your refrigerator. The refrigerator can be run on gas or electric. Uh, if you're running on gas and you see the check light light up, there's a good chance that the either one, you haven't uh, opened the valves at the front of the trailer on your propane bottles, or you've just done it and they have uh, not got up to pressure yet. Sometimes the system does take a little bit of time to build enough pressure to light some of the larger appliances. Uh, if that's the case, turn it off. It'll, it will try to light three times. If it doesn't light, it will stop. Go back out front, uh, check the bottles, uh, come back, um, make you know, leave it off for a few minutes, and then try it again, and it and it should light. Before we talk about your AC or your air conditioning, let's come and take a look at your thermostat. Now this will operate your heating and cooling system. Uh, this switch here will let you switch between either cool, fan, off, or heat. Well, as this switching over here will let you cycle through various options for the fan. And if you want to control the temperature, you slide this lever here. Now, when in the uh, cool position, it will obviously operate the air conditioning. It's important to note that the baffles on either side of this, when closed, will force cool air through the ports located in the ceiling around the trailer. With these baffles open, it will direct the majority, if not all, of the air right here to the main area of the trailer. Very useful if you're standing and cooking over the stove. Uh, you don't necessarily need the bedrooms and everything to be cool. Let's have a look inside your bathroom. It's a pretty standard bathroom. And one of the more important things that we'll find in here is the unit GFCI plug. If you ever come in here, uh, right now it won't trip. I'm not, I'm running off the battery. Um, but if you ever come in here and this light is on indicating that the GFCI is tripped, uh, hit the top reset button and then that light should disappear.
Unless this is one that has the green light indicating that it's good, then it will be the opposite of what I just said. Um, the reason why this is important is because whatever is connected to the load side of this plug will lose power every time this GFCI is tripped. Uh, and in an RV, that is generally speaking, your outside plugs uh, and anything near water. So if you have a counter plug in the kitchen or in the bathroom or even an outside counter plug uh, in the outdoor kitchen, then chances are it will be on the load side of this and will not be functioning if this is tripped. Okay, we'll step out to the bathroom. And before we head into the bedroom, I want to make note of access for the uh, inside portion of your hot water tank via two red Robertson screws there and there. Um, once you get in there, you will find uh, there are valves on the back of the hot water tank to switch it from a bypass mode and a summer mode or a winter and summer mode. Uh, winter would be the bypass, so you bypass the water heater in order to uh, uh, run antifreeze through the system. And you don't need to waste money filling your hot water tank with antifreeze because you can just drain it by removing the drain plug I showed you earlier. So inside here, there will be uh, there will be two valves to switch uh, from winterizing to uh, to not winterizing. Uh, those valves should be pointed away from the water heater in order to bypass it, uh, and towards the water heater uh, in order to be uh, running water through it. Good size bedroom here. We have some under bed storage options. And then I showed you earlier that the other half of the bed is utilized or made up of storage that is accessible via the outside of the trailer. So in the bedroom alongside the bed here, you'll note we have a 12 volt charging as well as a 5 volt USB charging capability. And although not included, we have an output and a mounting bracket position for a TV in the bedroom if you desire to do that. While we're here, would like to point out and make note of the emergency exit. This emergency exit can be used by pressing down on the black tab, pushing the red handle over and out from under the black tab, bring it perpendicular to the wall of the trailer, push it all the way outside of the unit, and once all the way out, you can grab the red tab from the screen Remove the screen and you can escape to safety. Now I did not mention it earlier, but it's important to note that your front storage compartment, or front storage compartment, uh, I guess it's front storage for your children maybe, uh, but your trailer, which uh, includes the bunks for your kids, also has an emergency exit, and this emergency exit is used in the exact same way as the one I just showed you previously. That about does it for the virtual orientation. If you have any questions, please give us a call, and we'd be happy to answer them as best we can. Thank you.